I'm so glad that you decided to come and be virtual Sangha with us in this time, this unprecedented time of uncertainty, of fear, and of joy. Joy in connection, joy in slowing down. So the first thing we're going to be doing is um, a silent practice. And as many of you know, the Buddha taught, and as I always say, the Buddha taught that meditation could be done sitting, standing, or lying down. So wherever you are in your home, um, whether you're in your home, your car, on your phone, sitting at your computer, just take a moment and just take a deep breath and find a position in which your body can be relatively comfortable. Um, some of us are practicing with chronic pain and discomfort, so that's why I say relative. Um, and feel free to make the adjustments during this silent practice that are good for your body. Imagine that the sound of the bell is ringing through your body, ringing through your ears. Let's take a breath together and let it out. For many of us, focus on the breath was how we learned to meditate. But meditation can be done many ways. If the breath is fine for you, then choose the breath as your focal point. For others, maybe putting a hand over the chest area or over the belly helps us feel the breath. For others of us, feeling the weight of our hands on our thighs, feeling the, feeling the weight of the sits bones on the chair or the cushion are another way to come into a focal point that you can hold for about a half an hour. For others of us, using a soft gaze about six inches in front of us, or listening to the ambient sounds wherever we are. There may be car sounds, conversational sounds, and just letting them rise and fall, coming into the air, coming into the ear, and then letting them drift away. So again, choose now a focal point. The weight of the body, and the touching of the body, the breath moving in and out of the lungs, the soft gaze resting about six inches in front of us, or the ambient sound as it rises and falls. And let yourself take another breath, and we'll come to our focal point and be in silence as much silence as is available to us.
as we practice, feelings arise. Anxiety, fear, uncertainty. This is natural in any time that we practice. We do not have to fight the fear or uncertainty. Let it rise and fall as if it were bubbles breaking the surface of water. Let your attention come back to your focal point. And if the emotion feels a little bit overwhelming, you might want or feel into your heart. And just imagine that you are comforting yourself and let the anxiety fall away. Feelings rise and fall, but come back to that which abides, that which is eternal, the endless presence of now, this moment, this breath, this weight of hands on the body, this sight that you're looking at, this sound, Come back to the present moment.
as we practice, physical sensations may arise. Discomfort, pain, itching, frozenness. Take care to make adjustment to the body as much as you can, as much as feels right for you. And if you are practicing with chronic pain, you may allow yourself to either touch physically or with your spirit hands and tenderness, focus your attention on the part of the body that is causing discomfort or pain. Sometimes when we do this, the sensation of pain can actually shift. If that is true for you, please let your focus shift to the part of the body that is in discomfort. And if it does not alleviate the sensation, let your focus remain on the focal point of your silent practice.
as we are coming toward the end of this meditation, I ask that you bring your attention to your heart. However, think of that heart, whether it is the physical heart, whether it is the heart of compassion, whether it is the mystical heart. And just for a moment, imagine that you're breathing into your heart. Breathe in wisdom and compassion, which, are, which so permeate the Buddha's teaching. Breathe out anything that is not in harmony with your highest self. Again, breathe in through the heart, wisdom, compassion, courage. Breathe out helplessness, fear, and despair. Breathe in wisdom, compassion, courage. Breathe out fear, despair, hopelessness. As we are tenderly filling our heart with compassion and wisdom and courage, Become aware of all those throughout the globe who are praying. All the spiritual elders. All the wisdom teachers. They are not necessarily praying about this virus. They are praying for an end to war. For an end to violence for end to destruction, the loss of land. And imagine that we who are practicing here at East Bay, that we are part of a huge, huge circle of prayers and seers and healers, and that we're joined together making prayers for the future of the people making affirmations for survival, breathing in wisdom, compassion, and courage. And let's now breathe out courage, compassion, and wisdom. Let's add to this list. Imagine that you are joining hands and hearts all around the globe, in houses, in temples, in groves, in caves, in churches, gods, in all the places under the stars and skies, amidst the trees, by the water, standing on the beaches, that we are one great part of global humanity, making prayer that the people survive making prayers that the world change the better, making prayers that spirit hold us in their heart. He, she, it, they, them, hold all the people, all the children, all sentient life, all water dwellers, sky dwellers, forest dwellers, earth walkers, all the seen and unseen, all sentient life, we are joined in prayer for the well-being, the sustenance, the liberation of all that is alive, all throughout all the world, all the ancestors, all the plant beings, all the human beings, all the forked and winged ones, the creepy crawlies, 
those who fly and swim, we are joined in a great prayer for the survival of the planet, for the survival of the life that dwells on it, for the survivors of our ancestors and our descendants, all that we care about. May all beings be liberated. May all beings be healed. May all beings experience wisdom, compassion, and freedom. I want to talk about isolation and I want to talk about community. Um, I've been on calls, some calls recently, some Zoom links and, you know, so, um, some of my extended family members are trying to check in with each other um, every week or so. Um, I'm at one end of the spectrum. You know, I have grandchildren and then I have my partner's children have grandchildren and they're much younger. And so I'm not going to make assumptions about us all in the room. One of the things we know is that diversity is in the room. For some of us, this is the first global epidemic that we have witnessed in all of our lives. Others of us may have fled war and may have experience some of the fear and the disease outbreaks that often accompany war. This is a re-traumatizing for some of us. All of us, or many of us, I'm not going to assume, there may be somebody in the room who has no fear, who has had no fear for the last several weeks. I will say I have moved through a number of sensations acceptance, resignation, fear, uncertainty. What do I do? A lot of feeling states. And the practice has helped because I get to notice that the feeling states rise and the feeling states fall. I talked to my nephew today, who is the person that generally fixes my computer. And he said, you know, it's not really different for me. I was working remotely before. I was going through job searches. I was filling things out. And that's what I'm still doing. In fact, he said, I've gotten a few more calls back. So for some of us, we're in a space that is very, that is not new, except outside is a little new. We weren't advised to wear masks. We haven't seen grocery store lines for some of us. For some of us, we have been in situations before where in fact, we didn't know how we were going to eat. We didn't know what would be on the supermarket shelves or if there would be anything on the shelves. So we are making the acquaintance or the reacquaintance of a lot of feelings. And for some of us, we're doing it alone. Some of us who are listening to me live in, a, in a, an apartment or a house or a situation where we're the only ones there. Some of us are living with an illness or a disability, and it takes a lot of focus just to get through the day. Some of us are finding that we have housemates or partners, and they're getting on our last nerve. I actually read something that said that in times like these, when people are forced to be in small quarters close to one another, if they're not used to that, sometimes there's a lot of quarreling, a lot of harsh feelings, a lot of judgment. There's a higher rate of divorce. And sometimes it's about your housemate doesn't wash their hands as much as you think they should be washing their hands, or they're going out and you're worried about what they're bringing back. So even if we have someone in the house, it might not be as easy 
or as simple as we wanted it to be. Some of us who live alone really relied on gatherings to form community. Some of you came to East Bay Meditation Center because we wanted to be in the presence of other living beings. We wanted to see faces. Some of us thought we knew the difference between solitude, aloneness, and loneliness. And we're getting a really harsh dose of, oh, you thought you knew what it was like to be alone? Well, let's see what it's like now. So I want us all to just think for a minute. What is community to us? Because community is a term that is bigger than family. It's bigger than partnering. It's bigger than having children. Community is a larger group and it holds all of us. And I want us all to be held in tender compassion. I want us all to hold us gently because this is a time when all the spiritual lessons we have learned really need to come into place. Who and what community? Let's just maybe put, if it's accessible to you, put a hand over your heart. Feel into your body sense and knowing. Feel into your mind. What does community mean to you? Who is your community? Not necessarily your housemates, although that may be. Is it the people who share your disability or a disability? and know what it's like to live in chronic invisibility, to be oppressed because you are not considered, quote, just like everyone else. Is your community those who live in a certain geographic area? Those who came through a certain era? Are you friends and community? with other refugees, other immigrants, others who are here and undocumented. Your community is big. It's bigger than just the people you live with. And whether you are in day-to-day -day connection, whether you see each other, whether you can speak to each other, you are still in community. I want us to think for a minute, those of us who are connected, people not in this state. Um, I don't know, and this may be a little difficult, but um, I want to go to gallery view again so we can see each other. If you have people you love who are not in this state or this country, just raise your hand. People you love. I'm going to look at some of the other screen. Just keep your hand up and maybe put one hand over the heart and just keep your hand raised for a minute if that's accessible to you. If you are not visible, image that your hand is raised. And let's for a moment, just for this moment, think of those people who are part of our community who are not in touching distance, who are across big, big waters, who are in other states. And let's just send them loving kindness. Let's just do the phrases of Metta. May you be safe and protected from inner and outer harm. May you be strong and healthy in mind and body. And if that's not possible, may you accept your limitations with grace and feel as much ease as is possible. May you take care of yourself. May you find food and sustenance and love and healing. 
with ease and joy, in spite of all that is around you. And may you be happy, truly, truly happy. We are in community. And as I said at the end of our meditation, we are in spiritual community. Well, right now, many of us are sheltering in place, are experiencing limitations. There are people who have been trekking for miles and miles in other parts of the world trying to get to a doctor. They are people who are still getting on boats, trying to flee war. Let's hold them in our hearts as part of the greater community, the greater spiritual community. Let's hold in our hearts, again, all those who are imprisoned because of injustice, all those who lack clean water, to food security. Let's hold in our heart and see ourselves as part of a greater community. A community that stretches back thousands and thousands of years to the treks of our ancestors. Fleeing volcanoes, fleeing drought, fleeing hardship voyaging in boats, following the call of dreamers and seers and spirit. Let's see ourselves part of a great community, a great human community that has experienced time and time again, disease, death, pain, fear, famine, drought, all the things that humanity suffers and experiences. Let's feel ourselves part of a great mass of humanity, seeking help, seeking love, seeking sustenance for the mind and the body and the heart. We are always in community with all life. And again, the metaphrases. May all of humanity be safe and protected from inner and outer harm. May all of humanity have ease coming into this world and leaving it. May all of humanity be as well as they can be. Maybe they be strong and healthy in mind, body, and spirit. And may spirit guide and protect them if that is not fully possible. May we care for ourselves and those we love with ease and joy. And may we be happy, truly, truly happy. And again, let's feel into our heart. Certainly some of us have been feeling lonely and some of us have been feeling afraid. We may have, some of our beloveds may not be here with us. And some of our beloveds we're having a little bit of a hard time with. So let's ask, what are we doing? to connect, not just with our human community, but with the, hum the community of sentient life around us. Some of us have the grace to be able to walk or ambulate and go outside. And I want to invite you to make community, not just with your human neighbors, and I'll talk about them less, but is there a tree in your backyard that you can touch? Can you touch a life whose skin is not like yours? 
but bark? Can you touch a tree and breathe with that tree? Can you take water to a tree once a day, three times a week, once a week, and make that tree part of your community? Decades ago, I underwent a spiritual ritual and I had to run four miles with water in my mouth. And in, pre and in prepping for it, I used to run at a particular track and I used to focus on a tree. And at the end of that run, I gave the water I was holding to that tree. And when I was running, I called upon the energy of that tree as I built up to being able to run for my and hold water. And I felt I made a relationship with that tree. Some of us are lucky enough to have a tree, a bush, or a plant close to us. I want to invite you to over the coming weeks, because we'll be sheltering in place for a while, to make community to make a sibling relationship with one of the standing people. If you cannot get out, you might have a plant or tree in your house. You might be able to find a picture of a tree on the screen or in um, a magazine. Make a relationship with one of the standing people. Our oxygen is dependent on the standing trees, and we have not been caring for them well enough, at least some of us. And even though we're an urban center, I want to ask us to make community with some of the plants around us. We don't have to know their scientific name. That's not who they call themselves. But our relationship, offering our carbon dioxide to the trees and the plants, and acknowledging the oxygen that comes back to us. As we slow down because of this virus, we've come to look at our neighbors and our neighborhoods. We may have just been used to coming home, maybe saying hi to the person next door, but really having our life and our friendships in our community, not in our very own backyard. This is a time we might want to explore. And everyone is different. Some of us live in apartment houses or in areas where it's not very safe. So I'm not asking you to take a risk to your life. But I'm saying, if this is an opportunity to get to know somebody halfway down your block, you don't have to knock on their door. You know, um, when we, we do meta, we do meta sometimes for the neutral person. Just notice sometimes as you're coming, as you maybe are taking a walk, who's coming out of your neighbor's house? Some of my neighbors have just invited everybody to come out and watch the sunset or sing a song. They've just sent something around. Um, how can we use this time as an opportunity to make community with our neighbors, the ones we don't know. Not forcing ourselves upon them, but being meta for them, acknowledging them, waving to them. You know, for when we live in cities, some of us are happy to live in cities and be somewhat anonymous. And this is a time we may want to reevaluate that. And then for those of us lucky enough to have working digital devices, this is a time also to catch up on our community that is a little far flung. I've had more messages to my goddaughter in New York in the last two weeks than in the prior year. This is a time that people that we may have just been more casual friends with or we, ha we, you know, we, we notice them when it's their birthday and Facebook may have reminded us that, oh yes, this is someone I do care about. 
But you know, those 300 friends or 500 friends or 84 friends that you know on Facebook, this may be a time to go through those lists and really think about somebody who's on there because you do care about them. Maybe they're from your job or your school and you haven't been in touch. This is a time to reach out. This is a time to build community. And that community, again, we all know about our housemates and our family. It's also a time to build community with the unpleasant feelings that are arising. This is a time to look at our fear, to let it arise, to notice. Some of our fears are related to our trauma. Is this a time that we're able to befriend the small child within us that experienced trauma? Is this a time to make community, to acknowledge, as Rumi talked about in the poem, the guest out of the house, oh, another friend to come to be with us, to look at our fears, Hold our fear and let it go. Hold our fear of what will happen tomorrow and let it go. Hold our uncertainty about food, the availability of groceries, and let it go. Is this a time to take our very real fear about our attendant who care for us with our disability? And reach out to some of our friends to post up on Facebook that we may need more care. To let our fear that we may be stuck alone, to let it go and come into the present moment, breathing our awareness, breathing our awareness of those who do tend to our body, who are reaching out. And those of us who are younger, maybe more able-bodied, is this a time that we want to make more community with someone who we don't know that well, but who might be open to a text, a phone call, a Facebook message? Someone I was on a call, call with talked about how She's really going up and down and in a lot of despair. And she said, oh, it's the worst day I've had. I just felt like it was all over. And while we were on a group Zoom and some things were said, but, but not in depth. This is someone I made a mental note. I'm going to call this person and see if, if she needs time, if I can do a half hour or 20 minute call. We can't be each other's therapist, but we can be part of each other's community. We can be a listening ear. We can be a listening heart. We can be someone who helps them problem solve or share something that they know. Um, someone said to me, don't go shopping in senior hours. It's mobbed. If you go later in the day, there are less people in the store. I hadn't thought about that. I don't know what I'm doing right now. I'm lucky enough that I have some younger people who are shopping for me. You know, I have, um, my lungs are compromised. So it's better for me if I don't go out. But maybe there's some tips that you can pass on. Being in community doesn't always mean that we have to see each other. Seeing each other helps. Hearing each other really, really, really helps. But when we don't have that, we have our prayers, we have our affirmations, we have metta, we have compassion, and we have the awareness that we are here together. We are part of one great circle of humanity. Beyond that, we are part of one great circle of life, of sentient life. We are the air breathers on planet Earth. We are linked 
the four-footed flyers. We're linked even to the creepy crawlers into the in, and to the burrows. We're linked to so many. So I dedicate the merit of the energy that we have raised. I dedicate the merit of our practice to all those in fear, to all those who are suffering, to all those who are uncertain as to food, clothing, shelter, water. May you be fed. May all sentient beings have life and habitat and health and healing. May we all be at peace. May we all be in harmony. May we all be in balance. And may we be happy, truly, truly happy.